So in today's video, I'm going to be walking through the process of taking a 5.1 Mac Pro up to Mac OS Mojave using only official means. So I'm not gonna use any patchers. We're going to use official support only. Okay, so the goal of what we're doing today is trying to get this Mac Pro running Mac OS Mojave. And we wanna do it officially because there's plenty of patches out there that allow you to run older hardware on newer operating systems. But Apple pledged that they would support these 5.1 systems under Mojave officially. So I wanna put it to the test and see if we can get it running without a patcher involved. So there's a couple things that we have to do first. And I, uh, I actually downloaded the High Sierra installer and the Mojave beta installer because it hasn't been fully released yet. So one of the things that I noticed is when you open the High Sierra launcher, you get this dialogue about uh, a firmware update being required. And so I'm gonna make sure to do that. But one of the other interesting things is if you launch the Mojave beta, um, you get this little dialogue that says, Installing macOS Mojave on this Mac requires that all graphics cards have metal support and that FireVault is disabled. So it's not letting me install it yet, and I do have FireVault disabled. So what that means is it wants me to take out the stock GT120 that comes with this device because it's not metal supported. So obviously I don't just use the GT120 because that's ridiculous. That card is ancient and terrible. But I do have it in because it allows us to have access to the boot screen. Whereas my metal supported Radeon RX 560 doesn't allow us to see the boot screen. So what we need to do is take out the GT120, but more interestingly, I want to see if the firmware update or the uh, running Mojave on officially supported cards is gonna bring back our boot screen. Because if that's the case, then I would argue that this Mojave system would be even more usable than under High Sierra because I wouldn't have to have both cards and keep switching back and forth if I wanted to boot into recovery or boot into Windows through Boot Camp. So the first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna put this on hold. We're going to update the firmware because if that needs to be done, then it needs to be done and that is going to give us the best chance of getting a fully supported, fully featured system. So what you have to do to do this is hold the power, uh, turn the Mac off, then hold the power button until the power indicator light flashes or you hear a long tone. And then you'll get a gray, a gray screen with an Apple logo and progress bar while the setup update is in progress. And then it will start up normally. So I'm gonna just hit shut down through the launcher. So now we're shutting it down and we're gonna do a long press of the power button. Now, if you watched my video where I updated the firmware on this 4.1 2009 Mac Pro to be a 5.1 uh, Mac Pro, I actually did the same thing when I updated the firmware. So it looks like we've got a newer version of the firmware, maybe that will allow us to use Mojave. So let's find out what happens. Okay, a long press. All right, it's flashing. And there's the tone, and there's the gray screen, and the progress bar. And it opened the CD drive for some reason. Well, the CD drive went back in, and we're turning back on again. Now remember, all of this is being done with the stock graphics card. So we'll still get a boot screen. Okay, everything is running as it should. The High Sierra installer is working. I mean, obviously I'm not gonna do that because we're not trying to get High Sierra on here. The next step would be to shut the computer down and I'm gonna take out the GT120 and then we're gonna see if we can install Mojave. Okay, let's power this on. So I've now taken out the GT120. The RX 560 is in PCIe slot one, slot two is empty. So while it's turning on, 
A couple people had mentioned in my last video where I did some work on this computer, they said, well, you should put the RX 560 in slot one because slot two runs at uh, PCIe X8. Not true, there are two PCIe X16 slots. And then it goes to PCIe X4, that's stuff for expansion cards. So there are two, you could actually run SLI or interrupt that for a second. We didn't get a boot screen, which is interesting, but it did turn on just fine. So, I mean, not that I thought it wouldn't, but anyway, you can actually run two, you could, you could SLI two cards in here if you wanted to. Um, and even if there was a PCIe X8 lane in here, the RX 560 only uses X8 PCIe, so it doesn't really matter. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and install Mojave or see if it'll allow us to. Um, wow, okay. So, um, it, it says that there's another firmware update. So, let's do it. We're just committing. I have class in half in 45 minutes, but I don't care. I'm doing it anyway. There's a flash. And there's a tone. Oh, there goes the CD drive again. I don't know why it does that. It's kind of funny. There goes the CD drive. All right, well, it's it, we're at the installer. It's letting us proceed. That is very interesting. And there's our disk. Put in a password. And, and keep in mind, this is still the beta, so it's not the final release of Mojave. But either way, it is letting us install it. Officially, I didn't run any patches. Uh, so that's very encouraging to see. Now at this point, I am running a little short on time, so I'm gonna stop the recording and I'm gonna come back afterwards. And, you know, it's just a normal macOS installation. It's not anything that you haven't seen before, so I'll just come back after it's done installing and we'll see what happens. <sighs> okay, so I literally just got back and I woke the machine up. I haven't logged in, but already, as you can probably tell, it's looking a little bit more Mojave-y. So let's go ahead and log in. And we'll see what happens. Okay, and we are in. So in About This Mac, we are indeed running the Mojave Beta. It's working. And so far I haven't seen any issues. I just ran through the setup process. But one thing that I'm curious about, because I let this thing install while I was at class, I didn't actually see it go through the booting procedure. So what I'm gonna do is restart this machine and we'll see if we got the boot screen. As suspected, we don't have the boot screen. So that's not ideal because as I said earlier, I, ooh, Okay, so as you can see, the Mac Pro really hasn't gotten the, the love that it deserves or the support that it deserves. Now granted, this is from 2009, so I'm not entirely surprised that it isn't receiving Apple's full attention, but you'd think if they're going to officially support it, they should at least attempt to give us a more usable experience. So. I would really like to see a boot screen. If you're going to restrict our, you know, supported graphics cards to ones that support metal, um, that means that they have a certain set of features that Apple thinks is very important, so they should reward us with, you know, giving us full access to a fully featured Mac OS, which should include the boot screen, uh, which would allow for, you know, switching to boot camp. Uh, I have boot camp on this. I use boot camp all the time and I, you can still use it, but you have to kind of play it by ear because you can't see the boot screen. And now that I literally can't put the GT120 back in here, so I can't get to see the boot screen even if I wanted to, that is annoying. That is very annoying. Yeah, I mean, from the outside, it looks really bad. Uh, usually it's just fixed with a restart, but you know, as I said in my previous videos, it's, you know, it's ubiquitous. It happens to everyone and it happens constantly. So that is one of the major drawbacks of using one of these machines, especially now that we're kind of locked out of the stock graphics cards that shipped with these devices. It is something to keep in mind. You're not gonna get a flawless experience, but you are going to get officially supported macOS Mojave. This thing works 
as it's supposed to, minus the aforementioned graphics issues. So I guess the best advice I could give is proceed at your own risk. This isn't going to be flawless, but it's also not that painful to go through. As you saw, this process really wasn't all that intimidating. It took me a couple of minutes and I have Mac OS Mojave running officially supported. So proceed with caution, but I do recommend this update. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. It's, you know, I'm missing my lighting and stuff, but it's kind of a more impromptu video. I've been doing those more often lately, so I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, at Luke Miani, and don't forget to join my subreddit. The link is in the description below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Okay.